very like processes that we're familiar with. So we are um, we, we know what factorising means, we know what expanding means, but let's look at it in a little bit of a different context. So I would like you to try and get this exercise done at home. Um, our next exercise is 4G. It's a long one, so we'll probably spend a couple of lessons on it. I don't want to move too fast, but I do want to move at an appropriate pace. I don't want us to move too slowly as well. So let's get into it. So we're looking at factorising some of these expressions. Now one of the rules here that you're going to use relentlessly is the difference of two squares rule. Okay, a plus b times a take b is a squared take b squared, which means if something's written in that form, we can factorise it to be like this. Okay, and there's no step in between there. It's about recognising that and then writing it like this. Okay, there's no step in between. It's just about making the point of recognition. So here we've got one squared take cos squared of x. Okay, so you've got a squared take b squared, a take b times a plus b. Um, and if you, you know, you can, if you were to perform that expansion using FOIL, that's what you get. Okay, exactly the same here, a squared take b squared. So the factorization is sec, uh, sec x take cos x times sec x plus cos x. Okay, uh, 3 sine squared x take 2 sine x. What is, so when we're factorizing, what do we do when we're factorizing? We're looking for what is common between both of these terms. Okay, what is common? Well, the numbers aren't common, so we're ignoring them. But sine x is in both terms. And so if we pull sine x out the front, we're going to be left with 3 sine x take 2. Okay, we can't factorise that anymore. Um, if we were to expand this, that's what we would get. Okay, so it's factorising using trigonometric, uh, trigonometric. Uh, functions. Okay, this is going to be a tricky one. Sine squared x, take 4 sine x plus 5. It's a tricky one, but I've got a cool trick to show you guys. Okay, When we have these sort of long factorization ones with sine and cos, it can be helpful, this is the trick, to define the sine function as a prime numeral. So I'm going to go let a equal sine x. Okay? So if a is sine x, then let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a squared, take 4a plus 5. And look how easy that is to factorise. We know exactly that's a quadratic. We know we need to use the cross method. We know how to factorise that. We're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us 5. And when we add them together, we get minus 4. So uh, 5 and 1. Um, I think this is supposed to be positive, by the way. Let me check more notes here. So these are the kind of errors I've made. Yeah. Either this is positive or that's negative. So let's change this 5 to negative. Sorry about that. So a squared take 4a take 5. And so we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us minus 5. And when we add them together, we get minus 5. Okay. We can see that. Minus 5a plus a gives you minus 4a. So they're, they're the factorizations. We wrap the brackets around horizontally. We've got a take 5 times a plus 1. And then we go, well, what did we define a as initially? Let's answer the question in the context of the problem. a is sine x. We've got sine x take 5 times sine x plus 1. Okay? If you expand that, collect like terms, that's what you're going to get. But looking at that, it's reasonably tricky to tricky to jump straight to there. Okay, but if we perform this little trick of substituting a prime numeral, it's much easier for our, our brains to comprehend and deal with. Okay. All right. Well, over to E. Um, now, with these questions, whenever it wants us to to simplify it, we need to make them have the same denominator. Okay. So I'm going to go through this to begin with. I'm going to go through it reasonably slowly. But as we move on, I'm just going to be performing that step so quickly. Okay, so uh, what, what's the algebra that's happening here? Here we've got 1, and we want to perform that, that sum. So we need this to have the same denominator as it does over here. So when we want things to have the same denominator, what we have to do is we have to multiply it by the denominator on top of the denominator. Okay? So 1 plus cos x on 1 plus cos x is 1. All right, we're not changing the value of, of this number. And then we have here take sine squared of x on 1 plus cos of x. Okay? 
Okay, so then what does that simplify to be? It's 1 plus cos x on 1 plus cos x. Okay, I'm doing it nice and slowly. Take sine squared x on 1 plus cos x. Now we have the same denominator. Right? So we can write both, the, uh, both of these at the top. Okay, so we're going to have 1 plus cos x take sine squared x on top of 1 plus cos x. Okay, so we made them have the same denominator and we've collected them. So in future guys, like what I'll be doing is I'll be going from there to there. Okay, I'll talk, I'll, I will talk to you for a bit, but we're cross multiplying the denominator. So we've got 1 plus cos x. Okay, now 1. 1, let, like another way we could write this is 1 takes sine squared x plus cos x. Or 1 plus cos x. And we know 1 takes sine squared x is cos squared x. So we've got cos squared x times 1 plus cos x on top of, oh, excuse me, cos squared x times uh, cos squared x plus cos x at the top on 1 plus cos x at the bottom. I'm just going to hit myself. What is common between these two terms at the top? It's cos x, we can factor, now we're performing the factorization. We haven't done any factorizing yet, but now we're going to perform it. Cos x is common to both terms, so if I pull that out the front, I'm left with in brackets cos x plus 1 on top of 1 plus cos x. And at the top and bottom, these are the same. Okay, cos x plus 1 is the same as 1 plus cos x, we could write it around the other way. But they're a factor at the top and a factor at the bottom, so we can cancel. And it simplifies to cos x. So this question that I've just gone through is a really good example of what this unit is about. Okay, um, it's just about manipulating these trigonometric uh, functions to come to come up with something a lot simpler. Look at what we started with, and look at the processes we performed. We made them have the same denominator. Um, we substitute one take sine x squared for cos x. We performed some factorization, and then we did some cancel. So that's a really good indication of what to expect um, that we're up to in this unit. Okay, so that's 4F3. So let's just keep working with where we're up to um, and have a good go about coming up.